Hello, and welcome to the tutorial for YDNA haplogroup O, one of the haplogroups that has played an important role in reconstructing the historical settlement of Asia. I'm Dr. Wendy Timchuk, and I'll guide you through the following slides to provide you with an overview of the current scientific research that is added to the knowledge base of this haplogroup. In addition, you'll become familiar with the process of using SNPs, or single nucleotide polymorphisms, to determine your subclade within haplogroup O. To introduce you to haplogroup O, I'll first cover a brief general introduction to haplogroups. Once you're familiar with the terminology, we will then go through details of haplogroup O, including its origin and geographic distribution. Following the information will be an overview of the subclades of haplogroup O. Once the subclades are introduced, we will then describe how you can utilize results of your Y-DNA haplogroup O subclade test to determine the subclade that you belong to. This explanation will be followed by some interesting recent observations on each subclade. At the end of this presentation is a list of resources should you wish to follow up on some of the primary literature for more detailed information. To maximize your understanding of the Y-DNA haplogroup O subclade test, it is helpful to first take a step back and review some concepts that will be built upon in the subclade analysis. First, it is necessary to understand what a haplogroup is. Haplogroups consist of a population of individuals that are defined by unique mutation events, such as a single nucleotide polymorphism, or SNP. An example of a SNP is illustrated on this slide. Here you can see nucleotide sequences for three different males. Remember that nucleotides are the building blocks of DNA. If you compare male 1 to males 2 and 3, you can see that male 1 has a different nucleotide, marked in red text, relative to the other two males, indicated with green. Other than this SNP, the sequence of nucleotides is exactly the same for all three males. These SNPs mark the branch of a haplogroup and indicate that all descendants of that haplogroup at one time shared a common ancestor, although this ancestor may have occurred tens of thousands of years ago. Let's now focus on the occurrence of SNPs specifically in the Y-DNA and see how they work to create haplogroups. It is believed that all humans are derived from a single male ancestor that is commonly referred to as Y-chromosomal Adam. Why do we start with Adam in this case and not Eve? Remember that the Y-chromosome is the male sex-determining chromosome, so it is only passed from fathers to sons. Therefore, the Y-DNA tests can only be done on males and will only tell you information about your paternal lineage. So let's focus again at the start of the tree, the Y chromosomal atom. As this lineage progresses through time, by chance a mutation such as a SNP will occur in one individual. All ancestors from this individual with the mutation will now also carry this unique genetic identification, whereas all other individuals not derived from this ancestor will lack the mutation. There are now two different groups of people, those with the mutation, which we can classify as haplogroup A, and those without the mutation. Over time, other mutation events can occur, creating unique lineages or haplogroups. Since approximately 100,000 years ago to today, a total of 20 haplogroups have derived from Y chromosomal atom. This figure represents the entire Y DNA haplogroup tree with the 20 different haplogroups labeled A to T. The focus of this tutorial is to cover the Y-DNA haplogroup O subclade test, so we, will not, so we will focus on haplogroup O for the rest of the presentation. This haplogroup is circled in blue. Approximately 60,000 years ago, a lineage derived from Y chromosomal atom with SNP M168 started to disperse out of Africa as they followed the migration of animal herds that they depended on for their survival. Sometime during this migration, approximately 45,000 years ago, another unique mutation event occurred, marked by SNP M89. On average, 90-95% to of non-Africans carry this mutation. A group of nomads continued their migration into the Middle East, and somewhere during this migration, SNP M9 appeared. 
This lineage continued their travels eastward, and were eventually blocked by high mountain ranges in the Pamir Knot. Some tribes were forced northward, whereas other continued east across the southern part of Siberia and eventually into Asia. These tribes carried the mutation M175 and are the ancestors of all people in haplogroup O. This figure illustrates the assumed migration path into East Asia of men carrying the defining snips for haplogroup O. The thicker red lines indicate the movements of tribes out of Africa and into Southeast Asia sometime between 18 and 60,000 years ago. This migration was followed by a northward expansion into East Asia prior to the last glacial maximum, approximately 22 to 34,000 years ago. These tribes were able to exploit the megafauna of the Mammoth Steppe to support their population expansion. The southward expansion into Malaysia, Indonesia, and the islands of Oceania was delayed until after the last glacial maximum, approximately 18 to 21,000 years ago, as they likely had to wait for more warmer and stable climates for the reliable food sources that would have allowed for their population expansion. Hainan Island was connected to the Asian mainland during the last glacial maximum, and it is therefore thought that the abor aboriginals on this island are direct ancestors of the original migrants into East Asia. Haplogroup O is found at very high frequencies on this island, reaching approximately 100% in one population. The blue arrows indicate more recent genetic admixture from Central Asia. After learning about the historical migration path of haplogroup O, it's not surprising to see that haplogroup O occurs at high frequencies in East Asia, but not in other places worldwide. This slide provides an overview of the worldwide frequency distribution of haplogroup O. The red areas in the pie charts represent the frequency of haplogroup O, whereas the rest of the pie contains all other haplogroups detected in that area. Some frequencies refer specifically to language classes within China, and in these cases the pie is labeled with the language family it pertains to. It is clear from this frequency distribution map that haplogroup O is most prevalent within East and Southeast Asia, with moderate frequencies detected in men from Central Asia and Oceania. Let's now take a deeper examination of haplogroup O. The phylogenetic tree on this slide illustrates the relationship of the subclades within haplogroup O, along with the SNPs that define each lineage. The SNPs in red text are those markers included in the Y-DNA haplogroup O subclade test panel, whereas markers in white are not included in the panel, but have been used in some phylogeny studies. This haplogroup is one of the more diverse Y-DNA haplogroups and consists of 32 unique lineages, or subclades. These subclades can be grouped into one of three major subclades within haplogroup O, in addition to paragroup O star. These are subclade O1, subclade O2, and subclade O3. Subclade O1 contains five deeper subclades, whereas subclade O2 has seven. Subclade O3 is by far the most complex subclade within haplogroup O and contains a total of 19 distinct lineages. Subclade O3 first can be divided into paragraph group O3 star and subclade O3A. At first glance, subclade O3A may look hard to interpret. If you look closely, however, you can see that O3A consists of six main subclades which are O3A1, O3A2, O3A3, O3A4, O3A5, and O3A6, and one paragroup, O3A star. Most of the complexity within subclade O3A is located in the deeper clades of O3A3. Now that you have an overview of the possible subclades within the O haplogroup, we will now outline the steps that you will have to take in order to determine the subclade that you belong to. 
First, you must have the results of your Y-DNA STR test indicating that you are predicted to belong to haplogroup O. The results of your Y-DNA haplogroup backbone SNP test will provide confirmation that you actually belong to this haplogroup. At this point, you can now go ahead and order the Y-DNA haplogroup O subclade test. Once you have the results of your test, you will use your SNPs to locate your subclade on the phy phylogenetic tree. In the, in the following slides, I will walk you through a step-by-step -step decision tree to show you how to locate your specific subclade. So before we start, I assume that at this point you are positive for SNP M175, the marker that is used to identify haplogroup O in the Y-DNA haplogroup backbone SNP test panel. This test panel also tests for the presence of M122. First, we'll follow the decision path assuming that you do not have M122. Therefore, you are part of subclade O1 or O2. Let's explore the deeper clades of subclade O1 the path you would take if you possessed SNP M119. If you have mutations P203 and M101, you are part of subclade O1A1A, whereas if you don't have M101, you are part of sub of pair group O1A1 star. If you did not have P203 but do have M103, you're in subclade O1A2. If you have no additional SNP mutations after M119, you're in the pair group O1A star. Now let's go back.